back to another video. The September scroll box has finally arrived. I mentioned in my vlog recently that um, scroll box have been having a few issues. I think it's more on the Royal Mail side of things. We've obviously had the royal funeral and the period of mourning which had included a bank holiday that was unexpected and also we've had a lot of royal mail strikes so here in the uk we have received these scroll boxes very late and i'm sure it has also impacted overseas too um but it's finally here and you know you can't complain too much um i mean it is what it is isn't it apologies for my cat there he's uh, being very vocal tonight so if you hear some meows that's probably what you're hearing anyway if you do not know what a scroller box is it is a monthly art subscription box where you pay a monthly fee of £18.95 free posting packaging here in the UK it would be an additional fee for overseas you receive a bunch of mysterious art supplies with a scroller zine that tells you a little bit about those supplies a little bit about the featured artist where you receive a piece of artwork from them as well and some featured artwork from scrollers from two months prior so if you use the hashtag scroller box or hashtag scroller challenge in your postings to instagram say you may be featured in the scroller zine two months afterwards um you also receive a little sweet in the box a vinyl sticker and a word or phrase as a scroller challenge where you use just the supplies in the box to create a piece of artwork based on that. So let's get into the box itself. It feels quite weighty, this box, this month. So I'm excited. We obviously have the oil pastels from last month, which were unexpectedly good for me. I know a lot of people still had issues with them, but I enjoyed those. So I'm excited to see what this is. It feels like a big box, so I'm interested. Um, this is the scroller zine I was mentioning, but I'm going to put that to one side until we have looked at the supplies. Then we have the featured artist. Wow. Okay, I'm not really sure what supply this would be. I'm going to try not to make any guesses yet, um, but it's a very interesting obscure piece of artwork so this is the featured artist t jurisic i believe that's how you say it um an illustrator muralist and founder of kavar illustration studio i'll let you read some more of that and then the socials for them is down here so we have a nice pad of cartridge paper by frisk let's get into this here Oh, I can already see one of my favourite sweets in here. Let's take this out. Put that to one side. All right. So, like I mentioned, these uh, fizzy rainbow belts are my favourite. I love how sour these are. So I'm excited to eat that. Nice big sweet. Okay, so let's start off with the big item in here. These are Faber-Castell Pit Artist Jewel Markers. Okay, so we've received the um, Faber-Castell pit pens, I believe they're Faber-Castell anyway, in a scroller box before, and they were very nice, they were water-based. Um, so these markers, I'm not sure, let's have a look. I'm not sure whether these are water-based or whether they are alcohol-based. Let's see if we can get into this back. Okay, so these are, I'm trying to read this as I'm opening them. Um, dual markers come with a versatile broad brush nib to cover large areas and a 0.8 metal encased fine liner nib for more detailed drawings. Okay, so it's a it's a brush nib um, and also a fine liner, which is interesting. You never really get that pairing usually. Oh, a very nice set of primary colours with secondary there and a dark sepia as well. So the colours are called orange glaze. Deep Scarlet, spin this one round, Ultramarine, Leaf Green, and then that Dark Sepia, like I mentioned before. Okay, so these are water-based India ink, um, acid-free and pH neutral, which becomes permanent once dry. They have a transparent finish, making them perfect for building and layering for more intensity. Oh, interesting. I've never seen these before. It's a lovely big nib, that. It, okay, so it's a, it's quite a felty nib, so it's not very flexible. So I'm, I wonder how well that will go down. 
and then this is your fine okay so it's a fine liner but it's not super fine so they look good they look very interesting i like the color selection i think we can get some nice things with that and i love this little box definitely won't be taking them out of this box it's lovely okay so i've never seen these before i've never heard of them so i'm interested to try them out let's have a look so from this image here they look a bit pastely but is that because they're transparent and they can't really show the colors quite as accurately then we have a Lyra Robinson 3B graphite pencil, so a nice standard 3B, um, a good softness, I think. Um, I'm usually a 2B gal, so um, close enough <laughs> to what I like. Then we have the cartridge pad, which, like I mentioned, was a Frisk cartridge pad, 180 GSM, 10 sheets of that. Um, it is um, it's nice. It's nicely smooth, a little bit of texture there but not too much so that'll be really nice for um the markers i think then we have finally the derwent technique eraser part of the derwent specialist artist collection this technique eraser will fast become your go-to for erasing needs okay so interesting it's a bit of a clear eraser i've never seen one like that before so i'm interested to see what that's like um let's before we go any further, let's flick through the scroller zine super quick. So we have the lovely laid out spread telling us a bit more about the supplies. Then we have some more about the scroller artist, which I will sit down and read shortly. Then we have some scroller tips, which I will read as we swatch like usual. And then the scroller gallery. So this was for the in bloom prompt that we had for the July box where we had the magic colour acrylic inks, um, which I think were really difficult to use. I, I usually like acrylic inks and um, I usually use them almost like an acrylic, but I've really struggled to use them and come up with something good. But some people have come up with some beautiful stuff. Look at this. That's absolutely stunning. In fact, they're all stunning, but this one in particular has taken my eye. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. And then we have the Scroller Extra, which is telling us a little bit about Faber-Castell, which is interesting. Um, so I look forward to reading that as well. So that's it for the Scroller zine. And then finally, our Scroller challenge is Fascinating Folklore. OK, so that's a really wide prompt. I feel like we can create some beautiful stuff with that. But let's swatch the supplies first and see what I'm drawn to, to what to create for that scroller challenge. And then I will read the hints and tips whilst we do the swatching. So let's get in with that. The scroller tips for this month are compressing. Experiment with building up layers of ink for intensity, shading and tone variation created by repeated laydowns of the same colour. Avoid ink pooling by waiting for each layer to dry before going back over it. Mixing. You can mix the ink on a palette to create some brilliant colour mixes and bright colour shades. Grab a palette to scribble on and wet paintbrush to mix your colours together. Washes. While you've got your paintbrush handy, you can add a little water to blend the ink out for some delicate washes, either on the page or on the palette. Just make sure you work, you work quickly. Once these inks dry, they're permanent. Because these inks are permanent once fully dry, you can draw or paint over them with other wet mediums for mixed media work without interfering with the layer underneath. The ink can be smeared and smudged whilst wet to create textures to your drawings. Use your fingertips, a sponge or even a paintbrush. M make some marks, play around with line weight, the angle you hold the pen and the pressure you create to create some visual interest. Using a combination of smaller and larger line strokes adds a nice detail when outlining your work. The dark sepia marker makes a lovely muted alternate alternative to black for outlining your work. It's dark enough to emphasise features and layers over the lighter colours with ease. Pit pens are best stored horizontally as this keeps the pigments in the ink evenly distributed. Storing your pens vertically will cause the pigments to pool in the end of the pen that is facing down. This can cause problems with ink flow and can disrupt usage. So, with these, I started to develop some thumbnails for this um, based on the folklore challenge. Um, now, my inspiration for this is my favourite book. I love a fantasy book and my favourite book of all time is The Mists of Avalon by Marion Zimmer Bradley. I love the folklore around Arthur and Merlin and, you know, the great sword and the 
and the the Aval and Avalon and all that sort of thing and it really really inspired me so I actually have two versions of the book I have a paperback which is pretty tatty now I've read it a few times then I have a hardback which um, is actually the original cover that my mum read I kind of wanted to get that original cover so I searched uh, high and low trying to find that and finally purchased it so yes I do have two copies of the book but I absolutely love it I think the imagery when you read the book is absolutely stunning and I I'm so influenced by it whenever I read it so I really wanted to use that as my inspiration and so I kind of thought um, let me I thought I'd read a little passage from the book and you can kind of conjure up the imagery that I was kind of going for however I will point out that I have a few goes at this challenge and I will break and pause and tell you why I've had a few goes um, in between but it, it, I did have a few goes so the, the imagery is basically what I'm about to read but it kind of changed here and there when I was trying to attempt the different parts of it so I will read this for you there lies the lake she said in a little while we will be within the walls and there will be fire food and drink I shall be glad of all three Morgaine said are you tired, Morgane? A little, the girl said diffidently, but I am sorry to see the journey end. I like seeing new things, and I have never gone anywhere before. They halted their horses at the water's edge, and Vivian tried to see the familiar shore as it would appear to a stranger. The dull greyed waters of the lake, the tall reeds edging the shore, silent, low-hanging clouds and tufts of weeds in the water. It was a silent scene, and Vivian could hear the girl's thoughts. It is lonely here, and dark, and dismal. How do we get to Avalon? There are no bridges. Surely we do not have to swim with horses? Morgaine asked her, and Vivian, remembering how they had had to do just that at a ford swollen by spring rains, reassured her quickly. No, I will call the boat. She raised her two hands to cover her face, shut out unwanted sight and sound, and sent out the silent call. Within moments, over the greying surface of the lake, a low barge appeared. So that's the kind of imagery I was really drawn to and remembered from reading the books multiple times and that's kind of what I was going for with the imagery for this piece. Um, so this first piece really shows that and then like I say I do attempt a few other things for various reasons that you will soon find out. Um, but I think I will let you watch the rest of that with a bit of music at the top and you'll hear my thoughts after each se segment of this challenge. As you can see it's ended up a bit of a flop so I did practice this because I'm not gonna lie I was feeling a little bit blocked as to how to use the supplies they're such bright colors I I kind of feel like for folklore you kind of want a little bit of um, etherealness to the to the artwork and so I was really toying with it and I gave in and thought I'm gonna use a paintbrush and some water and use it a bit more like watercolor and do you know what? I practiced this in my etch a sketch book, so I'll bring that in now, and it turned out so much better. Like it's really ethereal. It's exactly the feel I wanted for this artwork, and this paper. I just <sighs> considering the hints and tips I use it with water, and I know they didn't include a paintbrush, so I guess they weren't expecting you to use it with water. But it just chewed. It just chewed it up. It didn't react how I wanted it to react. So we're going to try something a bit different and I'm going to try a different piece. I did sketch out another piece that I think will work really well, but we may have to go a little bit less ethereal and a little bit more blocky in colour, but let's play with that anyway and move on to the second piece of artwork because this first one is not turning out how I want it to. <laughs> Thank you. 
get on board with this. I just can't. I don't know. I feel really defeated by these supplies. Really, really defeated. I didn't even feel like this with the uh, oil pastels, which I thought I would. Oh, I don't know. I just can't get on board with it. I, I think it's the paper for me. I do not like the paper. It's not working how I want it to work. And just all my ideas are not turning out how I want them. I did figure out this cool little technique of like splattering the pen though, which I think would be really lovely. Now, I was gonna call it a day. I was gonna say I'm done, I'm defeated, but I am not a quitter. <laughs> as much as I feel like I want to be right now, I am not a quitter. So I'm, I think I'm just gonna scrap the paper. I don't like it. It's not for me. And I'm gonna bring in my Etch-a-Sketchbook. Like I said, this is done with the supplies in the box without that water this is done with the supplies in the box and i really love how whimsy it is so i'm going to do something similar or something i don't know something related that i want to do on here i'm going to enter it like that i think um otherwise i am defeated and this is my entry <laughs> but i'm going to try something else on here let's see if we can do something something a bit better <laughs>
Okay, so there's a sudden jump in the clip because it's just not really my day, to be honest. Um, I lost the footage of the artwork that I actually am pretty pleased with. Um, so the bit that you've just seen um, of me doing inside the Etcher sketchbook, I actually ended up tearing that out for the first time um, in this sketchbook. I tore it out, I didn't like it. Yeah, I added too much water and it spread and it, it faded out and it just wasn't very good. So I restarted it, redid it, I had all the footage of me repainting um, that I wanted to use, but alas, I do not have that anymore. I mean, it's not perfect, it's not polished. This little boat figure here, the imagery of that, I, I think could be improved and maybe added more, but I was really worried about overplaying with it and just at the rate that I was going of not enjoying this supply, I just thought the best thing to do was to just not uh, play with it too much and just leave it a bit more ethereal. And that's the goal I was trying to achieve anyway. So. That's it. I'm, I'm not going to waffle on at the end of this. I I enjoyed the, the pens. I just, I don't know. I was struggling with it this week. Sometimes you have your off days and I thought it was a bit more true to me to, for me to show that, you know, sometimes you create art you don't like and sometimes you create art you love. So um, this was an off week and an off day for me and sometimes it happens, but I hope you enjoyed seeing that anyway. Um, please let me know if you're enjoying the supplies and whether you've got a lot gotten on with the paper a little bit more than I have um, and please hit that thumbs up if you did enjoy I do apologize for the choppy strange video that you've had but sometimes that's the way it goes so thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video